feel like I got to get a little closer to you if you don't mind. Um, Pastor Josh is always amazing, amazing job. To God be the glory for the gifts he's given to men. Come on, somebody. If you decide you want to go to American Idol, I got your back there. Hallelujah. One of the things I love about being able to pastor this church, and this is an amazing church to pastor, is that I said this was an amazing church to pastor, amen? Y'all, got, y'all talk about yourself. I'm calling you amazing. You don't give God the praise for it? Hallelujah. One of the wonderful things that I find about pastoring this church is that for every person that comes and ministers, because every person that comes to this platform and ministers from this platform, for every person that ministers behind the scenes and things that you don't see, one of the things that I appreciate is that I don't have to worry about it because every word that comes out of their mouths is anointed by God. It's the same message that we will continue to preach, that we preach today, that I'll preach in this message, and that is the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the soon coming King. Oh, 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 oh. (laughs) I'm relaxed. Breathe. A little excited about that. It's real hard not to get excited about that. I appreciate Pastor Joy talking about giving God her best on Sundays. Um, uh, truth be told is that I don't wear a suit. I, most of you know I don't, we- I don't wear this unless it's uh, uh, the special occasions, and that is um, weddings. I think weddings are very important. They're very traditional, so I'll put on a tie. Uh, funerals are also very important. I'll put on a tie. And Resurrection Sunday. Come on, somebody. Um, see, you, I, I want you to get this because um, I don't get an opportunity. I, 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 I try to speak about this on occasion from different from different avenues and different holidays and things that happen throughout the year. But I need you to understand that, that I, I, love, I, I love the holidays. Come on, somebody. I love Veterans Day and Memorial Day. We need to celebrate. We need to honor those that have fallen and given their lives for this country. Come on, somebody. I appreciate the of July because that's an opportunity to realize how free we are. But in, even in those holidays, we got to understand that Jesus gave it all for you. Let me relax. Thanksgiving is a wonderful time of year, and Christmas is even a more great time of year. But even in all of that, Thanksgiving and Christmas and Christmas, how what a wonderful tradition that is that we've grown up in, that we've, we've put all kinds of crazy stuff in there, the tree, the bulbs. And I mean, even, listen, let me tell you that no matter how wonderful Christmas is, it wouldn't mean nothing without Resurrection Sunday. The cradle is important, but the cross is much more important. It's the resurrection that gives us the hope. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just, this is what I love, this is, this is why I do what I do, this is the, the crazy that makes me crazy, this is the purpose, and, and I believe the reason why God sent me to you today, I believe that every opportunity that you get is a divine appointment from God, whether you realize it or not, you are not here by accident, you're not here because somebody invited you on Facebook, or a family member invited you on Facebook, it isn't because somebody tweeted you, or sent you a text message, it's because God Almighty Himself had a divine appointment for you to be here, for you to hear this message, and if you already know this message, it ain't about you, it's about you telling somebody about how wonderful our risen Lord, oh God, I'm getting excited. Breathe. I need you to realize, I want you to recognize, I want you to see that the purpose and the reason why you're here is beyond, the, is beyond what you could think or even imagine. It's beyond, this, it's beyond this moment in time where you think it's about this moment in time. You think that because this morning you had to go through hell and high water to get to church because you had a hundred kids to get ready because your uh, husband, your wife, everybody else in your family was, tell, was getting you not to go to church this morning. I'm telling you that the, the providence of God, that the purpose of God in your life is for you to hear this message for you today. Some of you need to be reminded about this message. Some of you need to go ahead and, and let this message just filtrate your entire system so you can share it and then live it. We need to live this message. We can't just talk about it no more. I'm tired of talking about the message. I want us to live this message. I want us to be about this message. And the message is simple. It's about the death. It's about the burial. It's about the resurrection of our Lord and King. Come on, somebody. 
the series that was uh, uh, the series that we were, we've been talking about the, that everybody watched on television uh, last summer, I believe it was. It was the Bible series. Everybody watched it. Not everybody, but millions and millions of people watched the Bible on television. How amazing was that? That the Bible came to life. Look, I know some pieces. Did I just? Is that me? It's me. How am I now? We're good now? I know that some pieces may have not been accurate. I know that some pieces may have been, may, may, may have been uh, a little maybe exaggerated, maybe not exaggerated enough. I don't care. What I do care is about people getting to the Bible and saying, I read it and it wasn't like that, or I read it and it was exactly like that. The point is you read it. You went back to confirm it. We talked about, I was talking with some people about different movies that have come out about the Bible and uh, the movie Noah. How many of you saw the movie Noah? How many of you liked that movie? Yeah, it was pretty crappy. That <laughs> was kind of like, it was really far-fetched, wasn't it? It was kind of off a little bit. Okay, it was off a lot. Um, but you know what? People went back and said, I got to go read that story. I got to go see if that's really what happened. And where do these, the, the, these giants made of rocks come from? I don't know. <laughs> but they went back and read the stuff, didn't they? The movie uh, of, of, um, that just recently came out with, uh, about Moses, uh, Gods and Kings, right? Is that what it was called? Exodus. I don't care. Look, every one of us grew up with Charleston Heston in the Ten Commandments. And we know how accurate that movie was, right? It don't matter. What does matter is that something... Somehow, in some form, got to you for you to go read it, for you to go see it, and then go confirm it. Now you're sitting here in church. A.D., it's the continuation. It's A.D., the Bible continues, is what the series is all about. I say it's A.D., the series. Easter was just the beginning. Easter was just the beginning. Resurrection Sunday was just the beginning. Today we're going to talk about this resurrected person, this, this, this king that we call this Messiah named Jesus. Uh, today he's the grave robber. Come on, somebody. In John eleven twenty five, 25, it says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. One who believes in me will live even though they die. Live ever. devil is a liar. Come on, somebody. Okay, we good now? Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, and I ask that you have your way. Lord, the reason for this purpose and time is so that you can have your way. We set aside this time as a divine appointment to meet with you, to hear from you to grow from, what, from you, to grow by you, to then produce the fruit that we've been speaking about, an abundance of fruit, more fruit. And Lord God, let that fruit be called love and let that love grow and then let us give it away. Lord, have your way here. For those that are far from you, draw them near you. For those that don't know you, introduce yourself to them in a mighty way. Oh God, and for those that are in Christ, Lord, let us overflow in the abundance of what you have for us today. In the name of Jesus, and God's people said. It's a wonderful thing to talk about Jesus and to talk about the miracles of Jesus. I love the miracles of Jesus. I love all of his miracles, even the little ones. And I can't say that any of these miracles are little. Some of you have heard me preach about this this. This miracles of Jesus and him being this rabbi and the understanding that if Jesus called you out to be his disciple, what he was saying is you can be like me. It was important for a disciple to, be, to want to be like his rabbi. It's too much for right now. I know it's, it's Resurrection Sunday, so I'll get to it. And, and it, it, it's important for you to know that, that these miracles that Jesus performed, he even said, you know, it's good for me to go away. He also said... You're going to do greater things than these. What are these greater things? That would be a whole another four months 
just talking about the greater things, but, but just know that the miracles that Jesus performed, he wants you to perform them as well. You can perform the miracles of Jesus. Anybody excited about that yet? I'm going to throw this. Hallelujah. What? Sure. Sure. Hmm. There are 34 distinct miracles that are recorded in the Gospels and, and countless more that went unrecorded. The scriptures talk about if it, if, it, if it were possible to record all of the activity of Jesus, we would not have the volumes. We would not have the libraries. And, you know, I don't care if you got a gigabyte. I don't care if you got a terabyte. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. If you got all this storage space, it's still not going to be enough to record everything that Jesus. I know, Edgar, I get geeky every once in a while. You saw me geek out up here, didn't you? Are you with me? You, see, you heard me geek out up here? Cool. The Gospels, the Gospels, unrecorded miracles of Jesus. The Gospel of John spotlights seven miracles, unveiling seven dimensions of Jesus' miraculous power. If I was doing a Bible study, I'd take each one of these miracles and I'd just break it down as easy as I could. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and jump in. And in John chapter 2, the miracle begins with Jesus turning water into wine. And God's people said, oh, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Y'all getting too happy about wine. <laughs> Hello? We're good for now. I'll see what happens. Thank you. Some would argue that this was, un, that this was unfermented wine. I'm telling you, that was no, no, that's a lie. This was good wine. This was the stuff you got, you just got this much of it and you knew it was good. Y'all y'all, y'all, y'all in church. So y'all, you don't drink that. Yeah, I know what you. Chapter 4, Jesus heals a noble man's son long distance with the power of a word. AT&T ain't got nothing on the word of Jesus. Hello? Talk about touching somebody. Jesus just turned around and said, well, if you're going to believe like this, then it's done. My word. Isn't it amazing that you can just pray for somebody and know that your prayers, your prayers go by every dimension and every, and every stratosphere to reach the person that needs it. You don't need to touch them. You don't need to be physically there. All you got to do is say, you know what? My mom's hip right now. Heal it in the name of Jesus. Uh, my sister's Come on, somebody. My sister's cancer can be healed right now because I'm asking you, Lord. That's why when I ask you for prayer requests through the week and I ask you, can you give me a prayer request? I want to pray for you is because I believe in the power of prayer just as in a word, just a word, just a word. The power of the, oh, ain't got enough time to talk about that on a Sunday morning. In chapter 5, he heals the man poolside, ending 38 years of pain and suffering with one command, uh, uh, one question. And then in chapter 6, Jesus feeds 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, and the hungry people in the house said, I love to eat. I can't help it. Hello? It's amazing that in, in, in the mathematics, you know, they got this new math thing going on. I don't even know what this new math is, but if it's uh, the old math of Jesus, five plus two does not equal seven. Hello? It's amazing how much you can do with your little and how much can come out because of that little that you get. All you got to do is believe a little. All you got to do is have that faith, uh, that little faith, that mustard seed. Oh, hey, y'all ain't ready for this. What's even, what's even more amazing about this, this, this spectacular miracle is that his encore was waltzing on top of water. Hallelujah. I, you know what, and, and please forgive me if I seem irreverent. I really don't want to come off irreverent, but I think Jesus was a little bit of a show-off, if you ask me. How many show-off? Don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I think he's a little bit of a show-off. He turns around and feeds 5,000 and then says, now watch me walk on water. But the principle here that we learned in this walking on water miracle is that sometimes we don't recognize God in the middle of a storm. Come on, somebody. Sometimes we got, oh, we preached that a couple weeks, catch it on YouTube. And just when you think you've seen it all, just when you think you've seen it all, the grave robber turns a tomb into a waiting room. He turns around and calls Lazarus four days dead. He stinks and he says, Lazarus! Some would argue about how emotional Jesus was at that time. But uh, it, it, I believe Jesus had swag. <laughs> I don't think that Jesus was this little monk that sat in the corner. 
I believe Jesus rolled up and said, um, get him out of here, clear this room, you too, watch this. Yo, Laz, come here. What's he going to do? The tomb can't hold him? That's the way I read it, okay? So the, if you don't feel it, that's okay. You want to read it how you want to read it. Uh, but he didn't, he, he, when, when Jesus stepped on the scene, something was going to happen. Hmm. It's amazing in that little procession, in that little funeral procession where a mom is trying to bury her son. And I know some of you, some of you have buried some loved ones this year. And, and, but just know that Jesus is the king of the dead. Come on, somebody. He's the king of the living. He's the, he's the king of kings. Oh, but it's amazing that he can mess up a good funeral, can't he? We'll talk about that some other day. The miracle then, however, in this particular case of Lazarus, is, and, and, and it foreshadows his death and his own resurrection. When you watch the first episode of AD tonight, and whether you watch it tonight on NBC at 9 o'clock, and, uh, on NBC at 9 o'clock, and on NBC at 9 o'clock, that's me telling you to watch the show. Don't watch Survivor. Don't watch, uh, uh, what's that other one um, that comes on around 9 or 10 o'clock, that, that, that storyteller one, um, what, that once upon whatever. Don't worry about that stuff. For most of you got kids, put them to bed at 8.30. They should be in bed by then anyway. Uh, I only got like one amen, but that's okay. But okay, I understand that maybe 9 o'clock is too, too late for you. Because you know what? You got to get up early in the morning. You got to get up at 5 o'clock. You got to get up and, and, you know, make the donuts. Hello? So you can come Tuesdays at 6 and we'll show it. <laughs> so if you ain't got TV, if you ain't got cable, if you ain't got time because it's too late, then I'm going to make some time for you at 6 o'clock on Tuesdays. Show up. I'll even serve you some popcorn. Hello? We'll have some popcorn. We'll watch the show for an hour and then we'll, we'll be... We'll, we'll go in, right here, right here, six, not my house. No, no, don't show up my house. Don't show, I'm going to give me a new pit bull in my house for those that show my house unannounced, okay? I'm just letting you know right now. Um, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, here, six o'clock, the series, uh, uh, and then after that, we're going to have a discussion. Uh, some of the pastors, some of our leaders, we're going to go ahead and, and from what we watch, we're going to have a discussion. We're going we're to lead a discussion on what we saw. And I think it's important that we do that because... We're going to allow the Bible to come alive. Hello? We'll even critique it. We'll even talk about, no, that's not the way it happened. No, yeah, that's the way it happened. We'll talk all about that stuff. Would that be okay? You know what would really impress me? What would really impress me? You know, you talk about miracles. I would love for every single one of you that's here today to show up Tuesday night for Bible study. Okay, I got five. So. And all I needed was two, so I'm good with five. Hello? <laughs> oh, Jesus, have mercy. Whether you watch it tonight or you watch it here Tuesday night, you will indirectly witness the miracles of Christ's resurrection. The seven miracles in, the, in John's gospel are seven signs, and each sign points straight to Jesus. So I want to offer a word as we look at these miracles. I want to offer a word of caution. Please, if you are, stop. But please don't seek miracles. Don't seek miracles because miracles point to Jesus. So I want you to seek Jesus, not miracles. I want, I, I, and here's the catch. Here's the funny part. If you seek Jesus, the miracles will follow. Hello? If you go after Jesus, you ain't got to worry about the miracles because you're going to leave a trail of them behind you. Hello? If you follow Jesus long enough and far enough, you'll eventually find yourself dead smack in a miracle yourself. You will, how's that commercial go? I'm not just a, a participant. You will be a victim of a miracle. Everyone wants a miracle, but here's the other catch. Anybody here need a miracle? Come on. Let me just see. Anybody need a miracle in their life right now? Anybody need a miracle? Yeah, I'm one of those, I'm one of those uh, Pentecostal preaching, tongue-talking, fire-baptized, believing God for the impossible preachers. So if you need a miracle, I believe God can deliver that miracle right now in the name of Jesus. You know what? Let's just take five seconds and believe. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Hoshata, right now in the name of Jesus, the miracle, God, I one of us needs in this house, oh God. I pray for a miracle right now in their lives. Lord, if 
it's a healing, let it be a healing. If it's a restoration in a relationship right now, in the name of Jesus. Or daughter, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes, sometimes things don't work, so you just start shouting and you get rid of all the technology. Is this thing on? Can you hear me good out there? Hallelujah. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs. I believe in wonders. But I want us to point to the one who makes those miracles happen. If the wedding party in Cana hadn't run out of wine, there would not have been a, no, a need for the winemaker. See, here's the catch. You've got to be in need for a miracle. Look, 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 look. Stop, 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 stop right now. Winning the lottery, though how wonderful it may be, is not a need in your life. I'm sorry, it's just not. You're not desperate enough for it, for it to be a miracle in your life. Sometimes it's a matter of desperation. How far, how, how deep are you willing to go? How much are you willing to believe? How much are you willing to wait for the miracle of God to touch your life? See, we grew, we, we're in a microwave world right now. All we want it done, we want it done in 30 seconds. As a matter of fact, I had to buy a new stove. And the stove that I bought is a convection stove because, it, because the convection warms up the oven faster. My wife needs to cook better. Not better, faster. Sorry, I meant faster. No, my way. Look, I didn't get this big because of bad cooking. Hello? I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you for the blood, Lord. Thank you for the blood. We live in a microwave world. We want it now. We want it here. We want it fast. We don't want to wait. We don't want to believe. We don't understand that sometimes a miracle has to go through a process. we got to go through a process sometimes to receive that miracle. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in the immediately. I believe in the right now. I believe that God can get glory right now, right here, with you, in your situation, and in your circumstance. Hello? But sometimes, sometimes you're just stubborn. Sometimes God's got to show you some things. I want to tell you that the God who made the wine, the water into wine so many thousands of years ago, 2,000 years ago, has not changed. The God that healed the man born blind has not changed. The man who walked on water and raised, and w and raised himself from the tomb three days after his crucifixion has not changed. He is the God who can make your impossible possible. The seventh miracle here reve reveals the true identity, the full identity of Jesus. He is not just a winemaker or the water walker. As impressive as those miracles may be, he is the grave robber. And he saves his boldest claim for last. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. It's that unique claim that sets Jesus apart. And I appreciate those of us that, that have had to find 12 steps to get to Jesus. I appreciate those that have, that have had to go through 30 steps. I appreciate those that have taken two steps forward and one step back to get to Jesus. Hello? Just keep taking the steps. I don't care what the steps are. But I want to tell you that even in all that spirituality and all that other kind of stuff, it all points back to Jesus. You got to get to Jesus you got to find your way to Jesus. Uh, Buddha, Muhammad, Hare Krishna, the rest of them ain't got nothing on Jesus. Um, he made the claim and he made it come true. He said, I am the resurrection. And in three days he left an empty tomb. Uh, you can go visit those other prophets, those other teachers, those other wise men, because their graves are still there. Uh, Jesus' grave is empty. Are you hearing me yet? <laughs> This puts him in a category all by himself. He is the son of God. 
Please understand that Christianity, our faith, our, our, our beliefs are not based on a foundation of philosophy or, or a code of ethics. It's not about all the good that you've done or the bad that you've done. The footer of our faith is one fundamental fact, and that is the empty tomb. After cheating death by calling Lazarus out of the tomb, Jesus walked out of his own tomb. And get this, under his own power. The ultimate apologetic. There is no argument against it. I want us to see that while most people have no issue accepting Jesus as a compassionate healer, a, a wise teacher, even a religious prophet, the, the beginner of Christianity, and that's all good, but that's not who he, he alleged to be. He claimed it to be the Son of God. C.S. Lewis famously observed, Jesus is either. And this is the question sometimes that we have to deal with. Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or in fact, as he claimed, the Lord. There is no middle ground. Either Jesus is Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. You can't have it halfway. The only question then. So which is it? That one, that one decision will determine your eternity and destiny. It will make the impossible possible. So the life-changing question, right back to our scripture, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. That almost seems like an oxymoron, does it not? It almost seems like something that's impossible in the middle of what's possible. Right there in the scripture, though you may die, you shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. So the steps are already laid out. Believe in the impossible, believe in Jesus, and you shall never die. Now here's the question. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? This is a question that no matter how loud you shout, no matter how much you clap, it's a decision and a question that you must ask yourself. Do you believe this? The only question in the, God's final exam, it's not a multiple choice question. It's a true or false. It's the most important question that you'll ever answer. That one decision will you determine your eternal destiny. That's how important this is. I know, I know. It's, it, 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 it's difficult talking about eternity when you got so many issues here and now. It's difficult talking about what's going to happen 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now when you're only 12 or 15 or 17 or even 25 years old. It's hard to look past. See, that's the reason why some of us, some of us don't even plan for retirement because it's so far off. We're thinking, hey, I ain't, I'm not ready to plan for retirement. So we never put away $5 a month into our 401k. Hello? Now when we turn 40, when we turn 50, when we're knocking on 60, we're talking about, ooh, I need to catch up or I'm going to work forever. I just thought I'd give you a little financial tip in there somewhere. That one was free, okay? But when you're this young, when, when, when you're this young, come on, somebody. When you're this young, sometimes it's hard looking 20 years down the road. I know I, I got at least 40 in front of me. Unless, I've got 40 years in front of me until I don't. Hello? I got at least 40 years in front of me until I don't. And that until I don't is if Jesus decides that he's going to rapture the church, I'm done. I told my wife this morning, look, you don't have to worry about what you look like in the mirror because today might be the day. Because she was all up in that mirror today talking about, oh, I look like this and I look like that. I did good this morning. Men, if you want to know the tips, I'll hold a men's conference and I'll tell you how, how you handle that one. Anyway, so, so it's difficult. It's difficult to think about what's going to happen in the future when you're living in today. But I would ask and challenge you, 
have a vision for your life past today. The Bible talks about vision and talks about perishing and it talks about not having one and, and throwing off restraints and not having. I ask you today, please, have a vision for your future. If you're in high school, I want you to stop thinking about graduation in high school and start thinking about graduating college. If you're in college, I want you to stop thinking about graduating college and what you're going to do for a career. Stop thinking about the job. Please stop thinking about the job. Well, I need to go make, you know, minimum. No, stop thinking about the job and start thinking about a career. Start asking God what it is that he wants you to do with your life and be in your life. Yeah, that's too much for Sunday morning. I'm sorry. I'll save that for, for personal counseling time. So the only question, the important question that you have to answer for yourself, that one decision will, you, will determine your eternal destiny. The good news is that it's an open door book. It's an open, it's an open book exam. It's an open book exam. Romans 10.9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you believe it in your heart, you confess it with your mouth, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Your eternity will be secure. Quit playing around with it. See, here's the great thing about it is that when you realize how, how precious that is, that your eternity is secure, what you do now you don't do because you have to. Now what you do and the appreciation that you have for what he did is because you get to. It's awesome to do things because you get to, not because you have to. I get to preach. I get to pastor. I get to coach. I get to raise my kids. I get to be a husband. I get. Those are my privileges. I don't have to be any of that. I can just be an IT, an IT nerd and just make some money and pay the rent, pay the mortgage. But I get to be a father. I get to be a dad. I get to be a godfather. I get to be these things. Not because I'm any good at it, because I suck at it all. Hello? There's some things that, yeah, I may, I may have some natural skills with, and I may get around with. But the truth be told, if it wasn't for Jesus, I'd already be dead in the natural. But he saved my life. And now I get to worship him. I get to praise him. I get to serve him. I get to preach for him. I get it, and I get it all. So what's the right answer then? Martha responds with a simple profession of faith. Yes, Lord. The little yes can change your life. The little yes can change your eternity. When Jesus rose from the dead, it radically redefined her reality. Jesus should be able to radically redefine your reality. As a matter of fact, your reality doesn't be, your reality switches because your reality becomes some, some mysterious thing. The reality then becomes is what the Word of God says. The reality becomes the miracles that Jesus talked about. The reality becomes living for God even when the, wor when the entire world... Forget it. Forget it. Leave it alone. No, I'm not going to leave it alone. That's why Tuesdays are going to be important. That's why it is that, that I, 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 uh, I tweeted, I Facebooked a, 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 a recipe for growth. I'm going to tell you right now, who cooks in the house? Who likes to cook? Who likes to bake? Now, out of all of you guys, how many of you follow recipes? How many start with a recipe, then end up with your own stuff? That's what you, most, that's what you all do, okay? You started with somebody's recipe, and you ended up with your own stuff. I'm giving you the recipe for growth. Here, step one, first ingredient, you showed up today. Step two, show up Tuesday for Bible study. Step three, just like the movie, repeat and do it again. And keep doing it again. And you will have the fruit. You will develop fruit and you will develop that fruit that lasts. If you were here last Sunday, you'd understand what I'm talking about. So the trick. The trick is learning. Learning to live as if Jesus was crucified yesterday, rose from the dead today, and is coming back tomorrow. Keep that in focus. That'll help with your decisions. 
that will help with the understandings of should I come on Sunday? Treat it like Easter. Treat every Sunday like Easter and you'll be here. Because you're here now and it's Easter. Tuesday. Tuesday rolls around. It, Tuesday's coming around and your calendar's getting full. Well, treat Tuesday like it's like he wrote that treat Tuesday like he's coming back again. It's in the future. When Jesus rose from the dead, it radically redefined reality. And when we allow that when we allow that reality to enter our lives, we want to know more about how to live in this new reality. I look at most of you out here, if not all of you, I, I don't see, I mean, I, um, I don't discern any evil people in here. I don't discern, like, spirits in here that are just outright nasty evil that need to be cast out. I, I, don't, I don't. I look around, and what I see is I see people that genuinely want to be good. I see people that genuinely want to do good. That's what I see. I see people that honestly want to live for the Lord. Okay, that's two of you. Good. I do. That's what I see. But what I also see is, the, it, 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 is this, this fight of living in a reality that says, you have to go do all this stuff. And you're so busy. And it's so hard. And it's so much work. I'd like for you, and then some of you already know this, but I'd like next time you think about somebody inviting you to Bible, to, to Bible study or to church, and the words come out of your mouth, oh, but I'm so busy. Busy is an acronym. It stands for being under Satan's yoke. Don't allow the busyness of your life to get in the way and interfere as a hindrance to you to serve God. Do, do you have to come to church every Sunday? Or, uh, no, I, look, I don't care. But grow. Get in the Word. Pray. Get with some people. Have a Bible study. Look, I'm affording you that opportunity on Tuesday nights. Amen? Clear your calendar. Make it so important. Make it a matter of life or death. Well, Pastor, that's kind of harsh. Life or death? Yeah. Make, make it a matter of life or death, and I'll tell you why. And, I'm, and I know what time it is, and I'm almost done. It's not your life that's at stake. You're saved. You're delivered. You're healed. You've got the kind of faith that moves mountains. Hello? You, I mean, you got it all together. You know, I mean, you know your Bible. You've read it from front to back, cover to cover, maybe cover and cover. That was the Sonic commercial. But the way that you live your life can impact the decision that somebody else can make about their life and death and eternity. We discussed before, sometimes it's very hard for people to see Jesus because we get in the way. The way to get out of the way or to let Jesus shine is to get more Jesus in you, get more word in you. See, when you start hanging around folks like Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit, when you start hanging around them folks, you know what happens? You can begin to be more like them. And then when people see you, they no longer see, like Brother Bruce was talking about, they no longer see the crackhead. They no longer, they no longer see the hoe. They no longer see the fill in the blank. What they see is Jesus. And not the world's definition of Jesus, please. Because I know that some people look at me and go, you are probably the worst case example of Jesus. They just don't know the real Jesus, hello? And I am trying to be more like Jesus. I didn't throw any water bottles today, see?
the resurrection miracles don't stop there. God raises dreams from the dead. He resurrects dead relationships. And no matter what part of your personality has died at the hands of sin, suffering, or Satan himself, the grave robber came to give you life and to give your life back. The grave robber steals back what the enemy has stolen. Then he gives it back to us with interest. I'm talking about he's interested in you. He's got an interest in you. Y'all thought I was talking about your money again. He will give you your smile back. He will give you your laugh back. He will give you your joy back. He will give you your life back. Sounds like a good country song. Amen? Play it backwards. So the question, do you believe this? If you do, he will make your impossible possible. Will you bow your heads with me, please? Some people wonder why is it that we do that? Why is it that we go and that we ask people to bow their heads, close their eyes? There's a couple different reasons for that. I'm going to explain them to you as your eyes are closed and your heads are bowed. The first one is it provides an opportunity for privacy. The privacy that you need to go ahead and search your heart and search the Lord. The other thing it does is that when your eyes are closed, your attention, your attention is not on what you see with your eyes, but what you see with your heart. And in this time and in this moment, some of you today are struggling with this relationship with God, and that's okay. I want you to struggle with it. Because I believe that is the Holy Spirit speaking to you directly. So here we are. If you've never accepted the Lord as your Lord, as your Savior, and today's the day that, that you want to do that. You've never done that before, ever. And today's the day you say, you know, Pastor, I am ready to live my life for God. I want to accept forgiveness that comes from the shed blood. I want him to forgive me. I want to receive that. And I want heaven to be my home. If that's you today, and you're, re- and you're willing and ready to do that right now, go ahead and slip a hand. I want to pray for you today. Amen. Now, some of you are here today, and you know you're far from God. And it doesn't matter how far away you are. You could be a million miles away, or you can just be one step away. But you know you're far. You know that 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 fire that you used to have for him isn't there as it used to be. And yet today is the day that you say, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I want to draw closer to God. I want to have that relationship that I used to have. I want it back. I want to the Lord to resurrect my relationship with him. If that's you today and you, and, and you want that for your life, go ahead and slip a hand up. I want to pray for you as well. Thank you in the back. Thank you in the back. Thank you in the front. Thank you from side to side. Thank you around this place. Thank you. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. Now, lastly, I love that song. Now, lastly, if you're here today and You need a miracle for yourself or a loved one. You need a miracle for yourself or your loved one. No matter what that miracle is, I don't need to know what it is. I just want to agree in prayer with you. Go ahead and slip a hand up. I want to pray for you as well. Thank you in the back, from side to side. Would you please stand? I'm going to ask our prayer partners to come. Pastors. You guys come up on the platform, please. Pastor Angelo, Pastor Teresa, would you guys come? I want to open up these altars because I just want to give you an opportunity to, to be prayed for. I want to give you an opportunity to, to engage with someone that is going to say, here is, here is the miracle I need. Would you believe with me right now for this miracle? Maybe you, 
lifted your hand up for salvation. Maybe you lifted your hand up for rededication. And you, want, you just want to tell us, come up and be prayed for and, and tell us that. But I don't want to, I also don't want to create an awkward environment for anybody else. But I do want to invite the Holy Spirit in to minister to those that need it. So I'm going to open up the altars. If your hand went up and you need prayer, come. If your hand went up and you need prayer, come. If your hand went up and you need prayer, come. Just come. And you can form two lines in the aisles there and as one of the pastors come available. As one of the pastors becomes available. Can I get some men to help us move some of these chairs, please? I'm going to move, remove the first row, please. And you can take that row and put them up here on the platform. I'm going to pray for you. And then the pastors and the prayer partners, they're going to pray for you as well. And then if you have to go, go. If you need more prayer, stay and tarry. I ask that as you go, God bless you. But let's be sensitive to what's happening here at the altars. We'll be playing some music and just ministering here. But I want to pray for everybody else that's here. Would you just extend your hands towards heaven and receive this? As it is customary for us to pray, we pray this not because we haven't received it. We pray this because we believe in the overflow of what God has for us. Receive this prayer. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. And give you peace. Now Father I pray for your people that have come. I pray for your people that are here. I pray Lord God that you would continue by your Holy Spirit to draw everyone here closer to you. Lord draw us in such a way that our relationship would grow. That you would continue to pour your Holy Spirit into us in such a fashion. That we'd be able to touch other people with your love. Fill us, fill us, fill us we pray. Now I pray, may the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And God's people said, if you received anything from the Lord today, would you give him praise? Hallelujah. If you need prayer, please stay at the altars. Stay at the altars. Come to the altars and let, and let us pray for you.